Foreman Auto Group, supporting your Boilermakers as a... are just 74 hours away from the kickoff of the 2022 Purdue football season. The Boilermakers will open up Thursday night against the Penn State Nittany Lions, an 8 o'clock kickoff at ross Aid Stadium. Our coverage here on the Learfield Sports uh, Stations will begin at 7 o'clock, and the Boilermakers trying to beat Penn State at home for the first time since 2003, and overall the first time since 2004. So the uh, Boilermakers have some payback coming, hopefully to the Nittany Lions on Thursday night to get their season started off with a bang. It is the Jeff Brom Show. We're here at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. We've got the head coach with us. A little bit later on, we'll be hearing from offensive tackle Eric Miller and safety Cam Allen. You can get your questions in tonight for Coach Brom at 888-246-2678. We're also live tonight on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site and on Twitter at the Purdue Football site, so you can leave some questions for us there if you'd like as well, and also let us know where you're tuning in from tonight. When we come back, we'll have the head coach with us. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And Tennessee did it after missing so many players to the portal. O'Connell rolls, going to let go deep, wide open. A Purdue first down and more for Brock Thompson on the U-turn on lower Broadway. He is in. Touchdown, Purdue, 75 yards. He didn't even start in high school until his senior year. Flea Flicker going to unload, and he goes to a crossing route for another first down. It's Brock Thompson again who finally goes down at the 41. Doing it on bad wheels. O'Connell over the middle. And up with great hands and a Purdue first down. O'Connell going deep. Is caught out of the two-yard line. Third and ten. Hooker has a hit out of his hand. Falls on the grass and Purdue scrambling for it. Boilermakers have it. Little boot and a dunk. Touchdown, Payne Durham. Low snap. O'Connell fires. Caught. First down, Purdue. What a grab by Garrett Miller. It's playing coverage. Over the middle. Caught by the tight end, Payne Durham. Into Tennessee territory. Spins free. Durham down the sideline. A stiff arm. He is in. What a play. O'Connell fires sideline, caught! It's Brock Thompson again, and he will rumble all the way down to the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown. It's right there off the edge. Hooker looking, scramble, take it down! For Purdue's ninth win of the season. It is good, and Purdue in a back-and-forth affair wins it in overtime. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Uh, got some boiler ups already on Facebook tonight from Hillsdale, Michigan. Uh, let's walk a little bit further down the line here. And we've got uh, Couts, Indiana. And we'll get some more here in just a minute. But uh, Coach Brom, it's, it's a little bit different right now. Playing on a Thursday night, you know, we are all creatures of habit. So today, Monday, ordinarily would be a day off, I think, during the football season. But it was a heavy work day that was a little bit interrupted today by Mother Nature. Well, today for us was normally a Wednesday practice, which is a good long practice, a lot of work to be done. Um, went outside for a while, and then the, the storm got on us fast. So, uh, you know, due to lightning restraints, we had to go inside. But finished practice and went well. I think our guys have prepared well. Excuse me, they understand uh, what's ahead of us. It's a tremendous opportunity against an uh, outstanding opponent uh, that really has had our, you know, our number here for a long time and uh, got after us the last time we played them. And, uh, you know, we've got to you know, step up to the challenge and, and see where we're at. 
You look at this Penn State team, and, and I think the first thing that steps out is the experience they've got at quarterback, like you do. Uh, Sean Clifford, 24 years old, sixth-year senior. That's the same as what the Boilermakers have. But he's had 33 starts already in his career, and I think he's seen a little bit of everything in his time at Penn State. Well, when you play a guy that has that much experience, you know it's, uh, you're up for a, a tall challenge. Uh, you know, he understands the game. He's been through it. Uh, he's not going to get rattled. Uh, he understands, you know, what his strengths and weaknesses are, and that's taking care of the football, being a quarterback that can run uh, when it's not there. He, they're going to run the zone read, the power read. They're going to use their quarterback's legs to get first downs, really good tight ends, really good running backs, and that's kind of their strength and a little bit of play action off of it. But, uh, you know, when he's playing efficient, uh, they're hard to beat. So we're going to have to find a way to, uh, you know, get after him a little bit, find a way to disrupt his timing, uh, you know, somehow take the running game away uh, because if not, uh, you know, they're going to score points and get yards. You go back to that game in 2019 that you played in State College. They used a lot of misdirection in that game, and I know that that's something obviously your defensive coaches have had to look at and, and plan for. Uh, Clifford, very adept handling the football, runs that option play pretty well, so he's a guy that you got to stop not only throwing but also running. Without question, he's, um, you know, with the ball in his hand, it's going to be a handoff or he can pull it and run it. So you have to account for him, which really gives you one less guy in the traditional running game. Uh, and we have to find ways to do that multiple ways. Um, you know, they uh, will use tempo on you to spread the field, get the ball in the perimeter uh, with the quarterback uh, ability to run the ball, whether it's a design run or, or a scramble. He, he's really efficient at that. Uh, and, you know, we're going to have to take away the easy completions, and that's always uh, a challenge. But uh, we've watched a lot of video. We're hopeful that we have a good plan together. I know our guys will play hard, but we've got to go out and execute. And uh, when, you, when you play these type of games, uh, you know, everybody's got to be locked in. You've got to play to the end. You've got to be able to handle adversity. You've got to be able to handle uh, when the score goes one way or the other and just continue to, to plug away. And I, I know that our guys uh, will give us great effort. On the defensive side, they've got a lot of talent at every position. They're a linebacker you traditionally through the years, but they've got a defensive tackle in P.J. Mustafer, who was injured last year, but a big contributor this year. And uh, they've got a really talented secondary. They believe they've got five cornerbacks who have NFL potential, and they've got pretty good safeties as well. Well, this is a team that's very talented, and uh, I know last year didn't go exactly the way they wanted, uh, but they have a lot of really good players. Um, you know, really the last team we played of this caliber is Ohio State, and we had a hard time with them. Uh, we had to kind of just hang in there and try to keep the game close, but it was uh, not a good day for us. So um, the defensive tackle who did not play in the bowl game, he's, he's a difference maker. He's definitely somebody that you got to count for. we got to figure out a way to block him with two guys, run it away from him. Uh, the secondary is experienced. And if you look at even the bowl game against Arkansas, Really, they didn't give up hardly anything in the pass game. It was quarterback run offense, uh, quarterback scramble. Uh, they got on the edge with them. Uh, but they're, they're very good. Safety is athletic. Uh, he makes plays. He's instinctive. Yeah, he can get interceptions, read the quarterback's eyes. They have uh, a lot of experience at corner, another a big corner uh, as, as well, number nine, that uh, really does a good job. So, you know, we're going to have to, um, you know, figure out a way to get big plays. But at the same time, we've got to just – methodically move the ball. Uh, we can't uh, turn it over. We can't take sacks. We can't have too many negative plays. And it's just going to have to be a game where we grind it out and, and play to the end. All right, we're coming to you from Walk-Ons. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Look at this crowd here, Folk Field. Are you kidding me? Take a bow, 3,217, a new record. How do you know when it's time to go? Like everybody in West Lafayette knows there's a soccer game going on right now. How do you know when it's time to fight? Dags and bullets and death is coming. Might be your time, but not tonight. Number 15, you 
USC 3-0. Highest ranked home win since 2006. Huge performance start to finish. Purdue is not rebuilding. Purdue is reloading. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Boilermakers and Nittany Lions Thursday at 8. We'll have our broadcast starting at 7 o'clock. Uh, let's try and catch up here to some of the folks uh, watching tonight on Facebook. We have Rowlett, Texas, Evansville, Indiana, Noblesville, Swamico, Wisconsin, Noblesville, Indiana, Borden, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Elnora, Indiana, uh, South Bend, Highland Park, San Antonio, and uh, we'll get to some others here, uh, Wanata, Indiana, uh, and uh, we'll get to some others after the next break. Couple questions. One, uh, we heard a lot about in the spring, because he got a lot of uh, reps, uh, Devin Mockaby, who's a walk-on running back for you. Tell us a little bit about how he might fit into the plan here coming down the road. Well, we've been very, very... Um happy with the progress of Devin Mockaby came in here as a walk-on um, and really has developed into a very good running back. Um, he's made a lot of plays for us throughout the spring and fall camp. Um, you know, not until you see him in live game action can you get a great feel of where we're at, but uh, he's going to play football for us. And I think if he just continues to work and improve and get better, we're hopeful that, you know, he can be in that Xander Horvath mode where he just continues to improve and uh, we find ways to give him the ball, but he's uh, been a pleasant surprise, and uh, he's a great young man to have on the team, and, you know, he'll, he'll play this year as well. All right, we'll go back to another couple of questions on Facebook. For first, let's go to the phone lines where Don is calling in from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, Coach Brown. Um, I have a couple questions. My first question is, um, uh, with the incoming freshman coming in, do you see anybody uh, with significant playing time this season? And my second question is, with it being an 8 o'clock night game, will you have to make any adjustments uh, for that versus like a 12 o'clock day game? Thank okay. you. Well, good questions. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we're happy with our freshman class. Uh, that doesn't mean they're all going to get on the field and be dominant players right away. But I think uh, they put in a lot of good work. Uh, we feel they'll, that they will continue to improve and at some point get on the field. I think right now, uh, if I had to say one young man that will get on the field for us, Nick Carraway has been a defensive end, and they came in from Texas that uh, really has had a really good camp. You know, he's strong already. He's put together, plays extremely hard. He's explosive. He's quick twitched, um, and we can see him on the field. And it's just a matter of making sure he understands what we've got to do and understand the plan, but uh, he's definitely been, uh, you know, he had a, he's had a great camp. So I see – Nick getting on the field, and then we'll see how the others go and, and uh, what happens with injuries. But, um, you know, all the guys have done a good job. When it comes to an 8 o'clock game, you know, we've had these before. And, uh, you know, you continue to prepare. We uh, took a couple practices in camp, and then we took one last week where we practiced that night at the same time in the stadium just to make sure that we're under the lights and we can adjust, uh, you know, to anything we need to as far as the ball up in the lights and catching punts and fielding things. Uh, so I think that uh, – you know, we, we've done that part, and it'll be a long day on Thursday. You know, we, as coaches, we always prefer to get up and, and go play football, and I'm sure our players do as well. But you know what? This is a game that's on national TV. Uh, a lot of people will be watching. This is why you prepare and work so hard to get an opportunity to play a great opponent in this type of a venue. We'll have a, a tremendous atmosphere at, at Ross Aid. Our, our players are looking forward to that, and we hope to give them something to cheer about. But uh, we know it's a tall task, and uh, we've got to – do a lot of things right, but we're looking forward to the opportunity. Jeff, since we were talking about freshmen before with Nick Carraway, a lot of questions, or at least a few questions this week, and I've had them all during training camp. Joe Strickland, the guy that you brought in from Brebuff, talk a little bit about the progress he's made so far. Well, Joe's a terrific young man as well. Uh, 
he came in here and, and took a lot of repetitions in the spring. He continued to work hard in the summer. Uh, we had a plan for him in fall. Unfortunately, you know, he got sick. He got mono, which knocks you out for an extended period of time. Uh, so he is still just getting back from that. You've got to make sure that uh, you obey all the protocols and make sure that he gets back healthy. And unfortunately, it's knocked him out for about three weeks, and he's still not fully back to practicing, but that, uh, you know, we're easing him back into it. But uh, he's going to be a really good player for us. He's just got to continue to work hard and stay healthy. Uh, he's been uh, a great young man to be around, and I, and I know he wants to, to be a great player and do well, and I know he's going to put in the hard work. Uh, another question we have from Facebook tonight, how many running backs do you anticipate? I think King Daru will be in the uh, first team unit, but uh, how deep do you plan on going at running back here in the first week? Well, I think it, it all depends on how the game goes, but uh, – King has experience, and you always want to err on experience the first game of the season, uh, so he'll definitely play for us. Uh, Dylan Dowling has had a tremendous camp uh, as well. He was a transfer we took from Indianapolis a couple years ago, uh, and he's, got continue, he's continued to get better and better. He's in really good shape. He's played football for us, so, of course, you know, he'll be ready to go. Uh, Tyrone Tracy uh, is going to do multiple things for us as much as he can handle, but we want to make sure that he gets his touches and he's played football in this conference, so he'll be ready. And then, you know, Kobe Lewis will, will be the next man up uh, because he's a transfer who's played some football at, at Central Michigan, but he was out all last year with a knee injury. And then, of course, Devin Mockaby and, and Kobe are in that same boat. We'll, we'll see how the game goes. They could easily play, but we're going to, you know, give an opportunity to those other guys first. All right, we're talking with Coach Brown. More in two minutes from the Jeff Brown Show, presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And Tennessee did it after missing so many players to the portal. O'Connell rolls, going to let go deep, wide open. A Purdue first down and more for Brock Thompson on the U-turn and lower Broadway. He is in. Touchdown. He didn't even start in high school until his senior year. Flea Flicker going to unload, and he goes to a crossing route for another first down. It's Brock Thompson again who finally goes down at the 41. Doing it on bad wheels. O'Connell over the middle. And throw up with great hands and a Purdue first down. O'Connell going deep. Is caught out at the two-yard line. Third and ten. Hooker has a hit out of his hand. Falls on the grass and Purdue scrambling for it. Boilermakers have it. Little boot and a dunk. Touchdown, Payne Durham. Low snap. O'Connell fires. Caught! First down, Purdue. What a grab by Garrett Miller. It's playing coverage. Over the middle. Caught by the tight end. Payne Durham into Tennessee territory, spins free, Durham down the sideline, a stiff arm, he is in, what a play by Payne Durham. Now O'Connell fires sideline, caught, it's Brock Thompson again, and he will rumble all the way down to the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown. It's right there off the edge, Hooker looking, scramble, take it down. For Purdue's ninth win of the season. And it is good. And Purdue in a back and forth affair wins it in overtime. Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Uh, before we get back to the uh, gre greetings from uh, Facebook, happy birthday today to Kelly Kitchell, a member of our broadcast crew. Uh, he'll be on the sidelines with us on Thursday night, which should be a great night for football. High temperature on Thursday right now. It's supposed to be in the low 80s, and it should be an absolutely perfect night for football. Uh, hello to uh, Noblesville, Indiana, Cumberland, Indiana. I believe we got them a little bit earlier. Uh, Highland Park, Illinois, San Antonio, Warsaw, Indiana. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And Michigan uh, tuning in as well. Evanston, Illinois, Crawfordsville, and LaPorte. And that's as far as we'll go down tonight, if, at least at this point. A question here, and I think it's a, it's a question that uh, is probably a, a group answer. You've got a couple of guys we're going to be talking about in our Pro Boilers segment. David Bell, George Karloff, this certainly difference makers. 
How do you replace the production of guys like that as you go forward into the 2022 season? You know, those two guys were outstanding players for us. Pretty good. <laughs> they did some great things, and uh, all Americans, and now in the NFL. And you love it when that happens for guys that put in the work and uh, are great teammates. Uh, I think we got a lot of great young players and people on our team, and sometimes uh, you got to get your opportunity to go out there and, and, and emerge. And, uh, you know, we have some veterans that are continuing to get better. We have some young men that haven't seen the field as much that will get out there, and you just hope that uh, – you know, through hard work and belief that uh, new guys will merge. But those two guys are hard to replace. They did a lot of great things for us. Uh, is it going to happen, you know, game one and day one? Probably not. But I do think that uh, a lot of guys are working hard to do their part to help us win. One of the things you wanted to do when you came here in 2017 was to build depth. And I think particularly on the offensive and defensive lines. We talked a little bit about this last week, but you were asked today during your press conference uh, – how many offensive linemen you would be comfortable playing, and you said eight, maybe nine. I don't think that's been a case here the last several years. You know, those guys work really hard our offensive line. They don't get a lot of credit, uh, just like the offensive line and quarterback when you win. Uh, they get a lot of notoriety, at least the quarterback. When you lose, uh, they, they don't. But I think our offensive line has worked very, very hard. Uh, they give us great effort. They continue to improve. Uh, we ask those guys to learn a lot and do a lot. We want to make sure we go into the game with a lot of bullets. Uh, but they put in a lot of time, and uh, it's not easy to play that position, to run block, to pass block, to pick up twists and games and blitzes and all those things. And just it, It's just not easy. Uh, but they put in great work. I think they've improved. I do feel like we have developed more depth. Uh, at some point, they're all going to play. You know, we had – the bowl game, a lot of new guys had to step in and play that game. And they did a really good job because they had gone through uh, the process of just continuing to learn and grow. But uh, we have really good leaders on the offensive line. We do have really good depth on the defensive line. Now, at the same time, uh, just like I've said before, okay, do we have a George Karloff or a Demarcus Mitchell? I don't know quite yet, but it doesn't mean that we can't have that. And uh, I think there will be a lot of guys on the field. They'll get their opportunity, and we hope that – you know, difference makers emerge as we play throughout the season. You mentioned the bowl game a moment ago, and certainly one guy that gave us a performance we'll never forget is Brock Thompson, playing on a couple of bad legs. Talk about the progress he's made after his off-season surgery. Well, Brock uh, has been a great addition to our team. He's from Indianapolis. Uh, he's a, a great person to be around. Uh, his family has been around athletics. Um, he wants to win. He wants to compete. But bottom line is he's had a lot of things done to his legs. And uh, even after the season, uh, you know, two rods placed into his legs. Uh, you can't just practice and play at the same type of tenacity that you normally do. You've got to rehab that. You've got to make sure that you get it healed. You've got to uh, be careful how much you practice him and, and get that sore. It's never going to be perfect. But uh, we've tried to find the right balance uh, to make sure that he's getting enough work in uh, but at the same time, we're not overdoing it because he's valuable to our team, and uh, we hope that uh, you know we get it right, and we hope that we can keep him healthy because he uh, he has natural playmaking skills. He loves to compete, and now that he's going to be the center of attention, it's going to be more challenging for him to to play well when people are going to be knowing where he's at and looking for him. Taking care of guys in training camp is always job one, and it sounds like you're going to get most everybody back to the field on Thursday night. We'll see how much they can play. But that was one of the big concerns is getting everybody on opening night against Penn State. Yes, and it's been a long process on that as well. There were a lot of uh, off-season surgeries, a lot of guys that we had to manage. And, and, and uh, it's taken a little bit longer than, than you would like. But uh, you know what? Uh, that's, that's how it is. This is a tough physical football game. We're going to continue to have things happen during the season. That's why you know having depth is important because at some point in time, uh, anybody on our team can play, really, with the red shirt rule being what it is now. All of them are eligible to play and get out on the field. Uh, so we got to get them all ready. Uh, but, I, but I do think that uh, most of the guys are as healthy as they can be. Are they 100%? Probably not. But uh, you know what? They're not going to be 100% during this season anyway. So they've got to continue to battle through that. We've got to be smart as coaches uh, and, and make sure that we're balancing getting enough work in but also getting – our best players and experienced players to the next game healthy. All right, we're going to give the coach a quick break so he can eat here at Walk-Ons. When we come back, we'll hear from Cam Allen. It's the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.
do get after the quarterback. Tenth in the country in sacks. Here they come against O'Connell. He's in trouble, and he breaks free. Pump fakes, throws, ends up, touchdown! It's David Bell, third catch on that drive. A front. Four-man rush, O'Connell pump fake, now throws a deep ball, going for Bell, and Bell caught it inside the 10. The defender fell down. For the Boilermakers after the two-yard loss, O'Connell to the end zone, and the pass is pulled in. Brock Thompson, touchdown. Anthrop moving into the backfield, and here comes a reverse, and then a throw, and it's Anthrop who originally got the handoff that gets the catch. And he's loose inside the 25, reversing field, inside the 15, gets a block, inside the 10, to the end zone, touchdown Purdue! They run it though to Doru, pushing forward and in, touchdown Purdue, has the lead back. Been too good to take off the field, let's see what he does in third and 10. Taking a shot, Bell somehow is left open, makes the catch inside the 30 yard line, inside the 20, fighting for our in the first half, Thorne to the air, fires to the end zone, and is it caught? It's intercepted, it's picked off by Mackey, took it away from the receiver at the one-yard line. Purdue ball from inside the one. O'Connell, long throw to Bell, who adjusts and make the catch at the 18-yard line. Trying to pull the upset here against number three, Michigan State, with a second down and nine. O'Connell to the air, Bell is left open again, inside the 30, on the cutback. Here's Finneran, 23-yard try. He is three for three today. Will they keep throwing the ball? They will here in first down. It's high percentage dump off. Doru is loose. He's got the first down and more. He's outside. He's in the Michigan State territory. Inside the 40. They finally get him out of bounds at the 35. 23-yard try here to put the Spartans away. Right down the middle. And the lead is 11 with 40 seconds to go. Welcome back to the Jeff Brown Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. Everyone needs a little playing time. Time now for the Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Tomorrow is cut down day in the NFL. Teams have to be down to their 53-man roster by 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, so we'll get a better indication of how many Boilermakers will be making NFL rosters this year. We can talk a little bit about the three draft choices that were picked in the NFL this year, and starting with George Karloftis, first-round pick of Kansas City. He led the team in sacks in the preseason with two, and he also had four total tackles, including the two unassisted uh, sacks. So George certainly playing his way into the starting lineup in Kansas City. Uh, David Bell, a third-round pick of the Cleveland Browns, did not play in the first preseason game because he had a foot injury, but he did play in the second two. Six receptions, a team leading 82 yards, and again, he is uh, competing to be a starting receiver with some injuries that they've had in Cleveland. And finally, Xander Horvath, seventh-round pick of the Los Angeles Chargers, had a couple of carries and a couple of receptions uh, for the Chargers. He is projected to make the roster, though, as both a fullback and a special teams player. So certainly we'll be watching George, David, and Xander and all of the Boilermakers, and we'll have a report next week on how many made those rosters. We are joined by Cam Allen, a f senior from Bluefield, Virginia. Uh, talking about David Bell, you had an opportunity to try to cover David Bell in practice. Can you talk about that experience? Uh, yeah, when uh, shoot, when you line up against David, you really got to be on shoot, that, what we call our P's and Q's. You got to be locked in. Um, you, you know, if he's spread out outside, you got to think some routes. But in, in the slot, they can also put him in the slot too. So I mean, David, he he uh, spread out a lot against our offense. I mean, so yeah, when we line up against him, you got to be locked in. 
Cam, as I mentioned, from Bluefield, Virginia. You were a quarterback in high school, 61 touchdowns your senior season. Uh, I think I've asked you this before, whether you've lobbied to become that two-way player. We have a lot of guys, though, in the secondary, Cam, that played quarterback in high school. What advantage does that give you defensively? Yeah, you know, uh, I miss playing quarterback, first of all. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I just think once you're a quarterback, you know, uh, on the defense side of the ball, you can read the formations, you know, uh, understand what quarterbacks, what they like to go to in certain formations. Uh, just really uh, on the defense side of the ball, safety, you got to be the quarterback of the defense. So, I mean, that stuff like that just transitions over and, you know, uh, just having a great feel of the game for it. Were you a, a kind of an option quarterback or you straight th- a straight drop back guy? Uh, for our offense in high school, we were a spread team. So, you know, we had a lot of receivers, you know, that could go, go up and make plays on the balls. But, uh, sure, if they needed me to run it, I mean, yeah, I had 29 rushing touchdowns too. So, I mean, there you go. whatever they needed me to do. So you're familiar with that spread offense, seeing it in high school. When you came here to, to, in college, both seeing it in practice but also seeing it in the Big Ten, it had to be a better adjustment for you, I think, having seen it. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, Coach Brown, like I say, every time I get on an interview or something, I mean, that's one of the best uh, offenses in the country with the, with the spread. So, I mean, every day we go out there, we get new looks, you know, coaches challenge us. Uh, so that just gets us prepared better for the game. Looking at your career stats, Cam, coming in, seven career interceptions, 13 passes broken up, two fumble recoveries. One thing missing from that resume, and that's Cam Allen for a pick six. Man. When do we see that this year? Sure, I should have grabbed one last year against Nebraska. <laughs> I, I yeah, I kind of remember here. that yeah. one. Yeah. It went right through my hands, but sure, we're going to get back to it this year. A couple yeah, of them, too. Yep. It gives you something to look forward to yes, your sir. senior year. Uh, the expectations are high, not only outside of the program, but I'm sure inside the program. Uh, the game against Penn State, how many times have you visualized running onto the field Thursday night in that opening game? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely in my head, you know, I'm, I'm going out there. It's definitely going to be a great game. It's going to be packed, blackout. Everybody's going to be excited for the first game. But, you know, when you head into games like that, you just got to, once you get on that field, you got to lock into your job and do your details. And, uh, you know, just can't let the outside factors get into your mind. I would assume it's not as big an adjustment for the younger folks than it is for the older folks like some of us playing a night game because you played a lot of them in high school. Uh, and, uh, you know, with most college students, the day actually starts sometime afternoon. So, right. you know, it's a little, it's probably an easier adjustment, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, so night games, those are the ones you get most hyped for. It's just really when you're in that hotel all day, you're just really anxious to get on that on the field. Uh, for those noon games, you're really getting up early and, you know, going right to the facility to get ready. But so you definitely got to get your mind right for those night games. Talk about Coach English. Ron English, your defensive coordinator, also your coach back there. What kinds of things does he emphasize and what impact has he had on your career? Yeah, you know, Coach English, I think he uh, does a right good job, you know, getting us where we need to be in uh, the exact calls. Um, right now he's preaching us to us, you know, just – Make tackles, get to the ball. If somebody expect the tackle to be missed, cause this is going to be the first game. So, you know, some tackles are going to be missed. You know, what eliminates that is guys flying to the ball, and, you know, right whenever he gets missed, somebody right there to uh, pick it up. So, yeah, just being physical, flying around to the ball, and, you know, just being very detailed as we can. Kinesiology major here at Purdue. Uh, we hope that football is a long, long career, but after football, what is life like for Cam Allen? So, after football, for me, what I envision for myself, um, I, I kind of want to have, like, my own, like, Back home, I have a friend's dad who was, like, a chiropractor. So, for me, something like that, I would want to have, like, my own, you know, little institution where I just better people in the athletic field. Have you had a chance to work on any of your teammates, any chiropractic skills? No, not yet. I don't think they trust me right now. I think, I think they want me to get to the ball right now. So, so. wait a minute. They let guys tattoo them last year, right? But they won't <laughs> let you work on something physical, right? So, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, tell me the key. What, what's going to make the Boilermaker successful in 2022? I think, you know, just listening to our coaches, you know. The coaches, they got the right plan for us. So, you know, if we listen to them, they're going to put us in the right spots, you know, just doing everything to the exact detail that they say to do, you know, going out there and playing hard each and every night. Cam, have a great senior season. Look forward to seeing you out there on Thursday night. Thank you so much. All right, when we come back, we'll be talking with offensive tackle Eric Miller. It's the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And Tennessee did it after missing so many players to the portal. O'Connell rolls, going to let go deep, wide open. A Purdue first down and more for Brent Thompson on the U-turn and lower Broadway. He is in. Touchdown, Purdue, 75 yards. He didn't even start in high school until his senior year. Flea Flicker going to unload, and he goes to a crossing route for another first down. It's Brock Thompson again who finally goes down at the 41. 
Doing it on bad wheels. O'Connell over the middle. Anthrop with great hands in a Purdue first down. O'Connell going deep. Is caught out of the two yard line. Third and ten. Hooker has a hit out of his hand. Falls on the grass and Purdue scrambling for it. Boilermakers have it. Little boot and a dunk. Touchdown, Payne Durham. Low snap. O'Connell fires. Caught. First down, Purdue. What a grab by Garrett Miller. It's playing coverage. Over the middle. Caught by the tight end, Payne Durham. Into Tennessee territory. Spins free. Durham down the sideline. A stiff arm. He is in. What a play. O'Connell fires sideline, caught! It's Brock Thompson again, and he will rumble all the way down to the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown. It's right there off the edge. Hooker looking, scramble, take it down! The Purdue's ninth win of the season. And it is good, and Purdue in a back-and-forth affair wins it in overtime. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. It's the Jeff Brown Show live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. A lot of folks uh, tuning in tonight on the Purdue Athletics site on Facebook, including Doug Miller. Who gives us a boiler up from Mason, Ohio? Your dad watching? Yeah, very so proud. you got to do well here in the next segment. You know, I'm, I'm looking. Forward I'm to sure that. you are. Uh, fifth year senior, three time academic All Big Ten. In fact, a Purdue graduate. You have your management degree, working on an MBA. So congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you have played in a lot of different positions in your time at Purdue. Uh, talk about the versatility that you've had and now the fact that you're going to play the left tackle spot this season. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, going into it, I came in playing left tackle and then obviously kind of got uh, thrown into the fire a little bit playing right tackle in 2019 and have kind of moved around, played uh, uh, two starts at left and then 11 at right last year. So I enjoy kind of the challenge of both playing both positions and uh, I'm ready to go at both whenever I'm needed to so uh, it was just good to get experience and now kind of settling into that left tackle role and looking forward to it. Aside from the obvious where one play you're playing on the left side of the where the ball snapped and the other on the right side what are the biggest difference between left and right tackle? Yeah obviously I mean you can get into the footwork um, and all that stuff just technicalities but uh but not a whole lot. You know, obviously, uh, our, we have a lot of guys who have a lot of versatility, and I think that's something to our benefit and something we've, we've kind of developed. And uh, we talk about in our room, the more positions you can play, the easier it is to get you on the field. And I think a lot of guys have kind of heeded that advice in, in the last couple years, and we have some guys who, who can do a lot of different things now, which is great for us uh, as a group. I've noticed that your hair is growing back in. Yes. Uh, that was not the case here. Talk about the gr decision by you and several members of your offensive line to shave your heads before training camp. Yeah, it was something kind of uh, Gus Hartwig and I had talked about doing uh, all summer and then uh, showed up for report day, and sure enough, he was uh, bald. So I uh, went home and, and decided to do it myself. I, I roped Payne Durham, my roommate, into doing it with me, and Jared Bozinski joined us as well. So we were just trying to keep morale up. You know, camp's a tough time, so we were trying to – uh, you know, keep the energy up, change it up a little bit, and I think uh, I think it definitely worked. So, the social event of the summer for Purdue football was Aiden O'Connell's wedding back at the end of July, and I've heard that you created quite a figure on the dance floor. Uh, talk about what, uh, where did that all come from, and is there any video of it anywhere? You know, if there's any video of it, I haven't seen it. I'm not sure I want to see it, but uh, <laughs> uh, they put they put me and uh, me and Gus and a couple other guys right next to the dance floor on the on the seating chart. So obviously they had some kind of clue of what was going to happen. So I think they knew uh, they knew we were going to tear it up. Not right a complete there. surprise. No. All right. Now looking at Eric Miller, you would think a lot of hobbies that you would have. Uh, you might have some ideas in mind. Baking is mm -hmm. one of them. How did you become a master baker? Yeah, you know, I had a lot of time on my hands uh, in the spring, had a couple of off-season surgeries, so I was, uh, you know, in the house a lot, decided to, to pick it up, and, uh, you know, I think I make some mean chocolate chip cookies, and we'll, we'll have to see how they compare to, to some others. 
Is that the, did is, is the recipes? Are they your own, or did you pick them up from somebody? You know, a good chef never tells a secret. Uh, I, so that, gonna, I, and and I won't that. I won't pry on that. Yes. Uh, I talked to Cam earlier about the excitement of opening night. Uh, talk about in in your mind as you visualize what's going to happen. Sold out uh, pretty close. I think will be a sellout crowd by by probably a kickoff and a blackout and national TV and the lights are on and. How do you keep your emotions in check? Yeah, obviously we're excited uh, uh, to have a home game against a great opponent. Um, you know, they come in and they're uh, very talented and, and their defense is going to play fast and downhill. But uh, we're excited to, to play in front of our home crowd, our student section, and it's going to be a great atmosphere. So we're looking forward to it. Uh, we got to treat it, you know, like one game at a time. And obviously the first game of the year, everyone's going to be revved up, ready to go. Got to control those emotions and, and just take it one play at a time like we always do. All right, finally, I asked Cam about his life after football, which, again, we hope is a long ways away. But with a, an undergraduate degree working on your MBA, where do you go when football's done? You know, I'm not – I. that's why I'm still here. That's why I'm still playing football. I want to push that decision <laughs> Stay off. Stay here as long as you yeah, can. Yeah, <laughs> so I uh, got the ability to, to play some more football and, and maybe play a little more next year. So uh, still kind of thinking about that. Obviously, I'd love to have a role uh, in, in football and sports, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully, that's a long ways away. Well, Eric, have a great uh, fifth year. Maybe we'll have a sixth year afterward, but uh, let's see if we can get after Penn State on Thursday night. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us. Jeff Brown joins us after the break. It's the Jeff Brown Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Look at this crowd here, Folk Field. Are you kidding me? Take a bow, 3,217, a new record. How do you know when it's time to go? But everybody in West Lafayette knows there's a soccer game going on right now. How do you know when it's time to fight? You dodge some bullets and death is coming. Might be your time, but not tonight. And, and pulled out of the air by Kyle. Naomi Splinters drops it and Purdue takes a 1 and 0 lead. Gracie Dunaway, Purdue leads it 2 0. Trouble again, and it's 3 0. Pouncing again with the braces, Gracie Dunaway. Knocking off number 15, USC 3 0. Highest ranked home win since 2006. Huge performance start to finish. Purdue is not rebuilding, Purdue is reloading. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. We'll be back on our normal night next week, Wednesday at 6.05. Special Monday night edition this week of the Jeff Brown Show because of the Thursday kickoff against Penn State. Couple of familiar faces on the sidelines for Penn State on uh, Thursday night. Taylor Stubblefield, who broke all sorts of Purdue and NCAA records as a, an assistant coach. Uh, for the Nittany Lions, and also Anthony Poindexter, who's been on your staff, is uh, on the Penn State staff now. Uh, do you, you see, you know, there's so much churn in college coaches, especially in the assistant ranks. Do you have to change signals? Do you have, is there anything differently you have to do because these guys might be familiar with what you're doing? Well, it's always a concern, uh, without question. And I think you see nowadays a lot of teams are trying to steal signals. You see the boards being used. You're seeing the false signals being used, um, you know, depending on whether you're a home team or away team and who's got the press box matters. All those things happen, but some teams are really good at stealing signals. So I know for us, um, you know, we've done some things, uh, even starting last year, but we'll continue to do it where 
you know, sometimes we do huddle now. Sometimes we do use the wristband. Uh, there's some dummy things that you can do to kind of make sure that, uh, you know, people aren't, you know, catching a beat on what's going on. But, yeah, that's a concern. You know, Coach Poindexter did a great job when he was here, uh, but he was here quite a, quite a length of a time and understands some of our players and some of the things we called. So we have to be very cautious of what we do. You know, we've talked this year about fifth-year players and about sixth-year players. You have a seventh-year player on your team this year, and Samisi Fakasiaki, a guy that has really battled through a lot to get back on the field for his super, super, super senior season. Samisi's a lot of fun to be around. Um, before he got hurt at the beginning of last year, he was set to start and have a great year, and he was having a really good camp, and unfortunately he went down in camp, and it knocked him out for the entire year. And uh, So at this time, he's, he's back. He's has suffered a few nicks and things here and there, so uh, he's had to overcome that. But uh, you know what? He can tackle. He can hit. He can uh, run and make plays. He's not as scared of contact. And when you're playing the middle linebacker position, that's always great to have. So I, I, I expect him to be a great leader for us. Uh, he wants to win. He wants to go out on a good note, uh, and hopefully he can play well. We talked in one of the previous segments about difference makers on both sides of the ball, and one guy that you need to ha be a difference maker this year is Jalen Graham. And he's a guy that has some versatility. Uh, we've seen him move back and forth, safety to linebacker. Where might we see him on the field in 2022? Jalen really uh, had an outstanding year last year, uh, really elevated his game to a high level. He understands in order for us to win, he has to continue to be that difference maker on defense for us, be a leader, uh, understand everything that we're trying to do, get guys lined up, uh, be instinctive, make plays. Uh, and, you know, I, I see him doing a lot of the same things. He's just uh, have, has versatility. He allows us not to have to sub in a nickel personnel sometimes when they put three wideouts in the game because he's able to not only play the run in, in traditional run sets but also play the pass. Uh, and he can just do a lot of things. So I think you'll see – uh, him doing a lot of the similar things. We want him to be um, somebody that can, can help our defense play at a high level. We haven't talked a lot about Charlie Jones. He'll be a, a receiver for you this year, but I think uh, his biggest value may be coming in special teams because he was the Big Ten returner of the year last year, and he's a guy we saw in the game against Iowa. He almost took one to the house against your team. Uh, having him on your side, though, that's, that's another weapon in the arsenal. Charlie's had a good camp, and uh, he's very familiar with Aiden. Uh, they played high school uh, ball around each other, knew each other growing up. Without question, he has a ton of experience in the, in the special teams game, so we've got to make sure we utilize that. He's a natural ball catcher, uh, can field it and, and make guys miss, especially the initial guys coming down on, on punt return. Um, he can find the lane and kick return and has the courage to hit it full speed. But with us, uh, I think you're going to see him as, emerge as a receiver. He's done a really good job. Uh, he's continued to improve. Uh, we want to utilize his strengths uh, as much as we can, and he has to be a very good playmaker for us in order for our offense to click. You know, one of the things we've noticed about him, especially on special teams, he's fearless, which is a good uh, attribute to have up to a certain limit. You want to be fearless, but you also have to understand that you need to play all season. Well, I tell you, a lot of guys um, that come in like he did, uh, he went to a smaller college, he transferred to Iowa and walked on there, earned his stripes, and now he wants to finish with a bang. And those are the guys that really, you're not only proud of, but really excel because they're driven uh, to want to do great things. So we want to make it work for him. He's put in a lot of great effort uh, since we got him here, uh, I guess, this past summer. Um, but you're going to see him on the field a lot. All right, our final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group is coming up on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. And Tennessee did it after missing so many players to the portal. O'Connell rolls, going to let go deep, wide open. A Purdue first down and more for Brock Thompson on the U-turn and lower Broadway. He is in. Touchdown, Purdue, 75 yards. He didn't even start in high school until his senior year. Flea Flicker going to unload, and he goes to a crossing route for another first down. It's Brock Thompson again who finally goes down at the 41. Doing it on bad wheels. O'Connell over the middle. And throw up with great hands and a Purdue first down. O'Connell going deep. Is caught out at the two-yard line. Third and ten. Hooker has a hit out of his hand. Falls on the ground. 
pass and Purdue scrambling for it. Boilermakers have it. Little boot and a dunk. Touchdown, Payne Durham. Low snap. O'Connell fires. Caught! First down, Purdue. What a grab by Garrett Miller. It's playing coverage. Over the middle. Caught by the tight end, Payne Durham. Into Tennessee territory. Spins free. Durham down the sideline. A stiff arm. He is in. What a play. O'Connell fires sideline. Caught! It's Brock Thompson again! And he will rumble all the way down to the sideline for a 70-yard touchdown! It's right there off the edge. Hooker looking. Scramble taken down! The Purdue's ninth win of the season. It is good! And Purdue in a back-and-forth affair wins it in overtime. More cycle through on Facebook. Brookston, Indiana tuning in tonight. Madison, Wisconsin. St. Louis, Wake Forest, North Carolina. Mokina, Illinois. Buffalo, Wyoming. Huntertown, Indiana. Uh, California uh, dialing in. And Orlando. So uh, thank to everybody for uh, tuning in tonight. Again, we're back on next uh, Wednesday night at 6.05. We've got about a minute left, Jeff. Uh, it's, there's a lot of hype for this game. Uh, Fox Sports has kind of taken over the, the Purdue Athletic Complex today. Uh, the importance of this game, but also keeping in mind that it's a one of 12. Talk about where this one fits into that whole scheme of things. Well, it's great that we've been able to build this thing up to have a game of this caliber uh, on national TV against a great opponent in our venue with all of our fans here and our players excited about it. So that's, that's a positive that we've gotten to this point now. In order to grow, you've got to take advantage of these opportunities, and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a, a tough football game. Uh, it's going to require... All of our guys to play at a high level game one, which sometimes doesn't happen. Uh, so we got to eliminate the silly mistakes and some things that will cost us and really just, you know, grind this thing out. This is, uh, you know, a really good football team, uh, but it's going to be a great atmosphere. And these are the things you, you dream about, you work hard for, and we hope to put on a good show. I know it's going to be a long day for you. Eight o'clock, uh, a long, long day with, before kickoff. Uh, what are you going to do to occupy the time? Well, we're used to a couple of these a uh, couple times uh, a year. Uh, it's not my preferred choice, but uh, you know what? When you, when you can play a team uh, like this on national TV, we'll wait to midnight if we have to. There you go. All right. It's going to be a long night. Hopefully a fun night. Should be a great atmosphere. We'll see you on uh, what, Thursday. Thank you. All right. Don't forget, we'll be back on uh, next Wednesday night here on the Jeff Brown Show at Walk-Ons. I want to thank our engineer tonight, Wes Scott. Our producer is Alex Seaton. The Boilermakers and the Penn State Nittany Lions kicking off the 2022 season will be at ross Aid Stadium. Uh, kickoff is at 8 o'clock. Our pregame show will start at 7. We'll have a Facebook Live segment starting at 6.30 so we can get you all the information you want on the game there. And also after the game, Boilermaker Sports Wrap with Alan Karpik and Nate Barrett. So it should be a great night for football. Again, we'll be back here next Wednesday night at 6.05 for our next edition of the Jeff Brown Show. For the head coach, for Eric Miller, and for Cam Allen, this is Tim Newton. We'll see you next week right here at Walk-Ons and see you Thursday night at Ross-Aid Stadium.